When the term Dupupsk is mentioned, one might immediately conjure images of cute, fluffy creatures and their affectionate mothers. However, the reality of pregnant and postpartum female behavior can vary significantly, ranging from neglect to the extreme, such as killing their young. You might wonder if it can get any worse, and unfortunately, yes, such behavior is observed in domestic hamsters, pigs, beloved dolphins, hippos, and others. Join us on a cosmic journey with us as we unveil the wild and unexpected examples of animals that defy traditional parenting norms, meet the world's worst parents in the animal kingdom. While the notion of cruelty to one's own offspring may seem peculiar to humans who typically provide the best for their children, it is quite common in the animal kingdom. Brace yourself for what follows as we unveil a compilation of some of the worst animal parents. Remember to express your appreciation by hitting the like button and subscribing, letting YouTube know you find this video interesting. Stay tuned as we delve into the fascinating behaviors of some well-known animals. First on our list are animals whose mating period involves a lot of scratching, fighting, and overall pain. These are the world's largest carnivorous marsupials, Tasmanian devils, living in Australia. While many know them from the Looney Tunes cartoon featuring Taz, in reality, they are stocky creatures with coarse brown or black fur and a tough demeanor. Despite their awkward gait, they can deliver the most powerful bite relative to body mass among mammals. During the mating season, Tasmanian devils engage in aggressive battles, biting and scratching each other for days. Males try to prevent females from leaving the den, biting and scratching them. Tasmanian devils typically mate in March and give birth by April. The reason they are considered among the worst parents is that newborns face a deadly battle, with only those reaching the mother's limited teeth surviving. The surviving ones remain in the pouch until winter, after which they are evicted to become independent. It's a challenging start to life, unlike our more pampered human experiences. Pigs, however, surpass Tasmanian devils in terms of poor parenting. Between 8 to 10 percent of piglets perish due to their mothers, either accidentally crushed or subjected to deliberate violence. This includes cannibalism, where pigs eat their own offspring, observed in both domestic pigs and wild boars. Various factors contribute to this behavior, including inexperienced mothers, aggression, noise exposure, and overcrowded conditions. Furthermore, maternal rage can be exacerbated by hormonal fluctuations, and overweight pigs are more prone to aggressive behavior. In addition to accidentally crushing piglets, some sows consume their crushed offspring, which scientists believe is an instinctual behavior to clean the pen. Seals, while initially exhibiting intense maternal affection, have a rather short-lived commitment to their offspring. Mother seals dedicate about 12 days to feeding their young, ensuring a rich diet for them to gain essential fat. However, once the milk ends, so does the mother's love. The exhausted female abandons her offspring, leaving seal pups alone on the ice for the next month and a half. This harsh existence causes them to lose half of their body weight before they are finally ready to swim and hunt on their own. The survival rate is bleak, with around 30% of seal pups perishing within their first year. Even seemingly benign actions like taking a selfie near seal pups can lead to maternal abandonment, as the mother may reject the pup due to human interaction. Hamsters, known for their cute antics, share an unexpected similarity with pigs. Occasionally, female hamsters may eat their own offspring, either observed directly or inferred from the mysterious disappearance of the young. Stress, fear, unfamiliar scents, hunger, and feeling overwhelmed can drive a hamster mother to kill and consume her babies. Creating a quiet and calm environment for hamsters to nest and care for their offspring is crucial to avoid such drastic behavior. Moving on to horses, their unique behavior during pregnancy involves mingling with every stallion in the herd and mating with each one upon conception. This seemingly illogical behavior aims to protect the foal from potential threats, as stallions are aggressive toward foals that aren't theirs. If a mare senses danger or perceives a threat to her foal, she may reject the newborn, displaying behaviors such as walking away, ignoring, denying milk, or in extreme cases, attacking or killing the foal. Farmers often take precautions, such as placing barriers and providing distractions to minimize aggression during this critical period. Female hippos, known for their formidable appearance, diligently protect their calves. However, tragedies can occur, as witnessed in Wang National Park in Zimbabwe, where a mother hippo's two-day-old calf was attacked and torn apart by adult hippos for reasons seemingly related to overcrowding and disease. Male hippos may perceive male calves as threats to their dominance, leading to such violent incidents. While female hippos do their best to protect their offspring, they are sometimes powerless in the face of aggression from other hippos during mating season. Pandas, often seen as adorable, make it to the list of worst animal parents due to their behavior toward their twins. 
panda offspring are born tiny, weighing a mere fraction of the mother's weight. In the case of twins, the stronger one receives all the attention and care, while the weaker one is neglected. This unequal treatment can result in the weaker cub's death, highlighting the challenging start to life for panda cubs. In conclusion, the animal kingdom showcases a diverse range of parenting behaviors, some of which may seem harsh or even brutal from a human perspective. Understanding these behaviors provides insight into the challenges animals face in ensuring the survival of their offspring. Panda cubs, the smallest newborns relative to their mothers among all mammals, face a remarkable size difference compared to their adult counterparts. An adult panda is at least 700 times heavier than its newborn, providing a striking contrast to the 20 times heavier human mothers and 50 times heavier orcas. Marsupials, with their pouch development, have smaller newborns than pandas. For instance, a newborn red kangaroo weighs about 0.001% of its mother's weight. The reason behind panda cubs being born tiny and with underdeveloped skeletons is not precisely understood by researchers. The short gestation period of just one month is thought to be related to their nutrient-low bamboo diet. Instead of investing energy in growing the fetus, female pandas focus on producing fatty milk to nourish their offspring. Newborn pandas are extremely small and vulnerable, unable to move or defend themselves. They are born pink, wrinkled, and hairless, lacking the characteristic black and white patches. The transformation begins within the first 48 hours after birth when their skin starts growing white fur, followed by black markings around the eyes and body. By about three weeks they are fully furred. Caring for such helpless beings is a significant challenge for panda mothers. Spending 80% of their time holding their cubs, they continuously press them to their bodies to aid feeding and stimulate bodily functions. During the first three months after giving birth, a mother's life revolves around her cubs, often foregoing food and water while their babies gain weight. This challenge becomes more pronounced when a panda mother, especially a young and inexperienced one, is tasked with raising two cubs simultaneously. In managed environments like national parks, staff employs techniques such as periodically swapping the cubs to ensure both receive maternal care and nourishment. The seemingly irresponsible behavior of pandas stems from their instinct to prioritize the survival of one cub over risking the lives of both. Turning our gaze to the avian world, the cuckoo stands out as a bird with a reputation as one of the worst mothers. Cuckoos practice brood parasitism, secretly laying their eggs in the nests of other species. This behavior involves eating or pushing out host eggs to make room for their own. Cuckoo chicks then grow up alongside the chicks of the host bird, whose parental duties are shouldered by the unwitting host. When a cuckoo chick grows up, it may face an identity crisis, learning crucial skills from its adoptive family, often different from its own species. Interestingly, cuckoos only mate with other cuckoos, showcasing an awareness of their true identity. Fostered cuckoo chicks face challenges, including potential rejection by the host bird, which can recognize the imposter. Cuckoos have evolved to lay eggs that closely mimic those of the host bird to minimize this risk. The timing of egg laying is precise, with the female observing the nest to ensure optimal conditions. Cuckoos may lay up to 50 eggs in different nests, employing various tactics to ensure the survival of their brood. This behavior, while seemingly cunning, represents the harsh reality of nature's survival strategies. In the avian world, black eagles exhibit a harsh response to sibling rivalry. With limited resources in their nest, black eagles lay only two eggs annually. The hatching of the first chick typically spells doom for the second, as the older sibling begins attacking the younger one. Observations show instances of older chicks pecking their siblings over 1,000 times within the first three days of life. This behavior has evolved due to the limited space in the nest and the scarcity of food. The parents allow such aggression as a survival strategy, recognizing that not all chicks will survive, thereby saving energy and resources. After the death of the second chick, the elder one may even consume its remains, illustrating the harsh realities of the avian school of life. For instance, an African Varos eagle chick takes 95 days or longer to fully feather. One might question the purpose of laying two eggs when only one chick is expected to survive. The second egg serves as a contingency for the mother in case anything happens to the first one. Now, let's shift our focus to the ocean depths and explore those marine creatures that can observe the tragic fate of their offspring with detached composure. Sharks, often perceived as bloodthirsty predators, reveal a less gentle side when it comes to their own young. Their history includes a trial of intrauterine cannibalism, with two types identified. Oophagy involves a pregnant female shark laying unfertilized eggs to support developing embryos. 
The second type of cannibalism is more intense, with a female shark carrying up to 20 embryos but giving birth to only two live offspring, fostering competition among them. The survival of the fittest occurs even after fertilization, with embryos displaying tactics like swimming between uteri to eliminate competitors. Shark pups born under such circumstances are larger, heavier, and possess a crucial competitive advantage. However, the struggle for survival persists, and shark pups may still consume their weaker siblings, illustrating the harsh realities encoded in shark DNA. Dolphins, typically seen as friendly creatures, have their darker aspects. Instances of aggression have been observed, such as an adult dolphin repeatedly slamming a calf against the water until it disappeared from view. Off the coast of Virginia, researchers found deceased dolphin calves with severe injuries, including broken ribs, skulls, and spines. In Matsu Bay, Japan, a group of dolphins coordinated a relentless attack on a calf, raising questions about their behavior. This aggressive behavior among dolphins is attributed to tensions arising from their infrequent reproductive cycles, where offspring remain dependent on their mothers for an extended period. Males, driven by the desire to mate, may resort to killing non-related or even their own calves to expedite the end of the mother dolphin's lactation period. Moving on to the red land crabs found on Christmas Island and the Keeling Islands, these creatures undertake an annual migration from October. In December, 50 million of these crabs migrate from the jungle to the coast to deposit their eggs in the sea. Contrary to expectations, they don't exhibit a nurturing relationship with their offspring, rather, they are quite fierce. The hatched crablings spend their initial month at sea. In an optimal scenario, the tide carries them back to the island, resembling a red living army emerging from the water. Pregnant female crabs migrating later during the tide might encounter their month-old offspring. For most of the year, these crabs live in burrows they dig in the jungle. During the dry season, they seal the burrow entrance to maintain moisture inside. Pregnant females, when meeting the young, don't help the offspring reach home with maternal love, instead, they may consume them. Adult crabs, particularly pregnant females, often eat their young, and hunger can drive them to swallow several of their own children. However, this doesn't significantly impact the crab population due to the vast number of offspring. Despite the abundance of crabs, only one or two individuals from each brood survive due to natural selection. In the next wet season, the crabs leave the jungle to commence the annual breeding cycle. Males arrive first at the beach, dig burrows, and defend themselves from other males. Females arrive later to produce offspring in the burrows, releasing them when the time is right. Crabs generally live for about 20 to 30 years, reaching sexual maturity at 4 to 5 years old. Moving on from crabs, consider what people do when their children don't want to leave their childhood home, they gently encourage them. Similarly, sand gobies or scientifically pomatoskistus take a drastic approach, they eat their young. In the animal kingdom, it's often females that care for the young, but male sand gobies take on this mission, consuming up to a third of potential offspring. Despite the time and energy spent on producing offspring, male sand gobies eat specific eggs, primarily those from females with larger and slower hatching clutches. This selective consumption may be a strategy to reduce the time spent on parental care and swiftly return to mating. The burden of raising young is not taken lightly by male sand gobies, who care for thousands of eggs until hatching within one to two weeks. Consuming eggs allows them to increase their total offspring during the mating season. Reasons for this behavior include eliminating weaker offspring, supplementing their diet, and replenishing resources for subsequent mating attempts. Smaller males, in particular, may consume entire clutches, believed to be a greater need for nutrients. While the common goby eats only younger eggs, the male sand goby selectively eats larger and younger eggs based on their value. This behavior is closely linked to adaptation, demonstrating that not only mammals, birds, and fish but also insects fall short of being perfect parents. Dracula ants, belonging to the Mystrium genus, live in various locations worldwide, and their offspring face challenges due to the ant species' predatory nature. The fastest, most unusual, and powerful aspect of ants lies in their jaws, which they utilize in unconventional ways. These include capturing and transporting food, defending themselves, stunning prey, dissecting it, and then transporting it to the desired location. Ants also employ their jaws to escape danger by pressing them against the ground and snapping them shut. This action propels ants backward, in nearly all species, jaws open and close due to muscular strength. The mechanism is akin to finger snapping by tightly pressing the tips of the middle fingers and thumbs together, gradually increasing muscular tension until they part, releasing a short burst of stored energy. The same principle applies to ant jaws. 
Remarkably, their snap is the fastest biological action ever recorded, with a speed of 90 m slash second, 295 feet per second. This is a thousand times faster than a finger snap or five thousand times faster than the blink of an eye. Dracula ants utilize this explosive movement to capture prey and feed their larvae. However, when it comes to the behavior of ant queens, the notion of ideal parental care takes a different turn. Queens in larger colonies exclusively feed on the blood or hemolymph of their larvae. Even with readily available prey, they prefer larval hemolymph. This feeding process involves the queen gently stroking the larvae, picking it up, piercing its skin with her jaws, and sucking out a drop of hemolymph. Surprisingly, this method isn't lethal to the larvae, though it impedes their growth. Ants, unlike more advanced social ants, don't feed their queens or each other through regurgitation, instead, only larvae are fed this way, and the queens are fed through the larvae. Moving on to burying beetles, their larvae face a unique form of parental discipline. When hungry, larvae signal their need by touching the mother's mouth with their tiny legs. Excessive begging can lead to unfortunate outcomes, and overly insistent babies may be eaten by the mother in moments of exasperation. This strict regimen teaches the larvae to behave more appropriately and avoid pestering the mother. Similarly, burying beetles have developed a special framework for requesting food. Female burying beetles release a pheromone called 2-foxyethanol, which signals the larvae to beg for food. This chemical message, emitted during the feeding process, helps regulate the feeding regimen, as the mother beetle feeds her offspring as frequently as three times per hour. In the world of snakes, approximately 3,900 species exhibit diverse parenting practices. Snakes share the commonality of laying eggs, and the timing of breeding and incubation periods varies across species. Snake eggs are elongated, ranging in size from 2.5 to 13 centimeters, about 1 to 5 in. Most snakes do not build nests but seek protected spaces under rocks, ledges, or in abandoned animal burrows. However, the care provided by snakes to their offspring is minimal, with statistics indicating that no more than 3% of all snake species show care for their young. Abandoned eggs become easy prey for predators, and newly hatched snakes are left to fend for themselves. Despite the diversity of parenting models, animals can exhibit care, attention, indifference, negligence, and even cruelty toward their offspring. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries signing off.